Now, there are two types of libraries. One are object libraries, which would be plants. The other are called texture libraries, which are the basalite products, the pavers, the walls, and the soldier course borders. We're going to cover both of them in this movie and how to create both libraries. First of all, let's discuss the object library. First, let's start with a library window. The library window is this window here that can be moved anywhere on the screen by clicking in the blue or silver area, dragging it to a new position, and then releasing your mouse. You can also change the size and shape of the library by going to one of the corners here. When you get the two diagonal arrows, you click and you drag, and you're able to change the size of that library. So if you minimize it, and bring it back up, it comes back up in the same place in the same shape. So now I've got it, say, coming up here. I minimize it. I bring it back. It comes in the same place. If I reshape it, so I want it coming up on the side of the screen, I'll minimize it, bring it back up. It comes up in the same place. Even after you've closed the program, it memorizes where the library was and brings it back in the same place, same shape. Now, object libraries are not limited to plants. They could be anything. In this example, I've got fences, and I've got waterfalls and ponds here. So it could be any type of object that you want to bring into a picture to create a landscape job. Now, again, all these libraries, when I minimize them, they minimize to the bottom of the screen. You can see their name here. To bring them back up, all you have to do is click on the Restore icon, and as you can see, it comes back up in the same place. So you can have multiple libraries, and each one can be programmed to come up in a different place. So your fences will always be, say, in the center of the screen if you have it saved that way. Now, I'm working in a low resolution of 800 by 600, so there's not a lot of space here. But if you have a higher resolution, you can actually have your libraries lined up on the edge of the screen, and the bottom of the screen, all around the edges. Now, there are two ways to bring an item from the library onto the screen. One is you can double click on the item you want and it comes up in the middle of the screen. The other way is to click on the item and drag it onto the screen. Both of them work. The advantage of click and drag is that you could actually replace an object that's on the screen. So you see how I have these purple shrubs down here. I want to replace it with this shrub that has the purple flowers. I drag it on top of that shrub and drop it and it's actually replacing those shrubs that are on the screen. So that's one of the advantages of clicking and dragging. Also, if you want the library to minimize after you brought something up, let's say I brought, bring up a shrub, the library is still there, it could be in my way. Under library, you have a command called shrink after use. You notice there's no check mark there. I'm going to click on that now. So now you see there's a check mark there. So now I'm going to double click on the shrub. You notice that the shrub came up in the middle of the screen and the library automatically minimized itself to the bottom of the screen to get out of my way so I could go in and manipulate the shrub. Now I'm going to show you how to create a new library. So let's say we got from a friend of ours who does decorative concrete a bunch of concrete circles that we want to add a library to. So what you do to build a new library is go up to the library command and click on new library. Then you got to decide whether it's going to be an object library, a texture library, or a color library. Usually we just use objects or textures. And because these are going to be objects, we'll call it an object library. So we're going to name it. So we'll give it a name, then you click OK, and then you click OK again. So now we go back up here to library, and we'll see a new library here called Concrete Circles. So we'll bring it up. You notice that there is nothing in this library. So we want to add the new items to it. So what you do is you go over here to Items, and you click Add Items. Then you would navigate to the folder, wherever it is on your computer, where you have those items you want to add to the library. Now, you can select all the items in this folder by clicking and dragging all over all of them, or you could just select on one and do Control A, which selects all of them. And once you have them all selected that you want, you click Open, and it will populate that library with the new items. Then what you want to do is save this library by going to Library, Save Library, and click Yes to make sure that you want to save that library. And then you can simply close that library. So now if we go back up here to library, we've got our concrete circles. You can see all the circles that I've just added here. Again, you could click and drag those onto the screen, or you could double click to bring them to the screen. Now, if you want to delete a single item out of the library, so let's say you're looking at the library and you go, you know what, I don't think I'm going to use this particular color here. You select on the one you want to delete out of the library, go here to items and click delete item. 
click OK, and now that one is gone from the library. If you want to edit the name that appears in the library for that item, you would select on the item that you want to edit, go up here to Items and click Edit Item. Then you want to go here to the Name field and then simply change the name up here. We'll edit that, just call it Cement Gray, click OK, and you notice that the name has changed in the library. Then again, you'd want to save the library to save that change. Now, if you want to edit the name of the library that you have, what you would do is go under Library, click on Edit Library Name. You'll see the name here of Concrete Circles. Let's say I'm just going to name this Paper Circles. Click OK. So now you see the library's name has changed. And again, you have to save this library. Now, if you want to remove this library completely from the program, let's say you've made it, you used it, and you say, you know what, I don't want this library in my program anymore, all you have to do is click on Remove Library. It'll ask you if you're sure. You click OK. And that library is gone forever, and there is no undo. You'd have to build it again. Now, object libraries and texture libraries can be accessed from two different places. One is the library command up here. You notice when I click on library, I've got plants, and then it has a pull-off menu wherever you see this little arrow here. It means there's another menu, and I'll go down to shrubs, and under shrubs, there are subcategories for shrubs and also for trees. So plants work that way. Texture libraries, if you click open texture library, you have the Basilite products library, and you have grass. There's only two libraries here that will go into textures. So the other way to access a texture library, you must have a defined area on the screen. You must select on a defined area, and then go up here to pattern library, and this is where you'll find all the uh, Basilite products that we call seamless textures. Now we've been talking about object libraries, so now let's get into the difference of a texture library. First of all, if you go up here to libraries and we'll click on new to make a new library, the way you make an object library and a texture library is exactly the same. The only difference is when you're going to make the library before you give it a name, you click on texture library to tell the program what kind of library you want to create. Then you would give it a name, then you click OK, just like you would with an object library. If we go over here and open a texture library, we'll find that the windows work exactly the same way. You can define them, set them up, and everything works just like an object library, adding items, shrinking the library after use, removing the library. Everything is exactly the same. The difference is that a texture library is made up of seamless textures. Usually they're rectangular or square in shape. They're not objects that you can size and manipulate on the screen. They're something that you would click and drag into a defined area. So I just place grass where the pavers were. Or I could place mulch in there. And it's a seamless texture, meaning that you usually can't tell where the seam is. On this mulch, you can see the seam on that one. But usually in a grass or a paver, you can't tell where the piece one piece starts and the other piece stops. So let me show you the two ways you can use texture libraries. First of all, before you could even use them, because you can't pull them up on the screen like an object, you must have a defined area. A defined area is a place like a driveway or walkway that you've defined with the defined area tools. So we're going to select on the defined area. We'll go up here to Pattern Library. This is one way to access the texture libraries, which, again, are the Basilite products. So if I want to place a different color paver on here, all I have to do is click on the paver that I want to place in here. It pulls it off the library and places it in the driveway. It's very simple. But if you wanted to show a customer different uh, colors, you could click on Show Library and simply click on the different products. That's one way to do it. The texture libraries also appear as secondary libraries, so they can be used in two different ways. Let me show you what I'm talking about. So if we go up here to Library, we go Open Texture Library, we see that we have many different libraries here. I'm going to go to Decorative Concrete, and we have a pull-off menu with all the patterns of Decorative Concrete. If I want Ashlar Slate, I simply click on that library, and it comes up on the screen. Now, I could click and drag these libraries onto the driveway. This is one advantage, is that they're super quick to do this. The disadvantage, in this case, the Ashlar Slate is a little too small. I can't adjust it because I have to be in the Perspective menu to do that. So we'll close the library here. So I'm going to go to Pattern Library, and I'm going to close this library here. I want to bring up the same library that was at, so I go here to Secondary Library. I click on this pull-down menu, and I'll scroll down to Decorative Concrete and this was Ashlar Slate. So now I have the same library, so if I pick on something, 
The advantage is I can now scale it, which I couldn't do when I'm clicking and dragging. But now if I want to put another one in there, I go back to Show Library. This Show Library is different than this Show Library because it's going to show the secondary library. So I'm able to change that to a different texture. Now, if it sizes back down like mine just did, that's because you didn't set the scale of the image. So I'm going to quickly do that to show you how to remedy that. So we'll go here to Tools and we'll click on Measure Image. So I'm going to click at the bottom of the driveway, click one point and another point, and I'm going to set that at about, say, 30 feet. So now if I go back into the libraries, and I'll select one, you'll see it's now coming in at the same scale. So that's one thing that if, and this will happen to you because you'll forget to set the scale of the image, which again is in the perspective tutorials. The other thing you could do too is you could save this as your default library. For example, if I always use the decorative concrete ashlar slate pattern, I click save as default so this library will always come up when I come back into the menu. So now I'm going to come back into pattern library, close this and you see that Decorative Concrete Ashlar Slate is saved as the default secondary library. Also a reminder as we showed you in the tutorial movies that Grass and Mulch are a secondary library. You can access them from the secondary library here and I'll show you another trick. I want to go to Grass. I'm in the G's. I can scroll up and look for it this way but if I'm down here I can also put my mouse over the menu and press G on the keyboard and it will slide up to some things that start with G in this case Grass. So it's just a quicker way to get to the menu. Again, you can select something and it pops it in the area, whether it be grass or mulch. Um, and you can also do it from these libraries here. We'll go to grass and mulch. We can click and drag it into the area. Both ways work. And again, grass is not as crucial as pavers or concrete as far as the scale goes, because pretty much it's just a green carpet.